Huawei breaks the siege, U.S. companies loosen restrictions. Why does the crackdown only fuel a resurgence? Who could have predicted this? The United States, leveraging its entire national power, implemented over 200 control measures to besiege and intercept Huawei for four years, from cutting off the supply of chip manufacturing equipment to banning the Android system, and even pressuring allies to ban Huawei 5G equipment. Even overseas companies supplying Huawei faced guilt by association, fines. Yet, just when everyone thought Huawei was about to suffocate, the U.S. suddenly loosened its grip. Not only did they hastily approve NVIDIA's export of the high-end H200 chip to China, but they also quietly amended the export control list, changing the ironclad rule that using Huawei chips is illegal to a mild reminder of potential risks. Even more subversive is that Huawei, which was supposedly being choked to the breaking point, actually staged an explosive comeback in December. With its chips and 5G modules achieving successive technological leaps, it forced the formerly unquestioned hegemon to actively make concessions. This reversal of getting tougher the more they are hit has dropped jaws across the global tech community. Is this the US capitulating? Or has Huawei been hiding a secret weapon? Huawei's Ascend 920 rivals NVIDIA's H200, and the key lies in the computing efficiency. Trump card. If we compare AI chips to trucks, the H200 is a 10-ton heavy truck, while the Ascend 920 is a vehicle that carries 9.5 tons but consumes half the fuel. The domestic AI large models it supports are like running faster transport at a lower cost, directly hitting the pain points of global enterprises. It's just like buying a phone. If the performance is similar but the battery life is doubled, who wouldn't be tempted? If the Ascend chip was the breakthrough, then the 5GA industrial module released by Huawei on December 9th was the showstopper. Just 48 hours after the launch event, orders from over 20 global automakers and factories flew in like snowflakes. BMW's Munich EV factory, Volkswagen's Wolfsburg headquarters, and Volvo's Gothenburg R&D Center were all on the list. Even Fiat Chrysler, a U.S. automaker that has historically relied on Qualcomm, quietly sent a team to China to discuss cooperation. Behind this lies the monopolistic hegemony of U.S.-based Qualcomm. Previously, it ruled the high-end communication module sector, not only selling single modules for over 3,000 renminbi but also imposing, draconian terms, a 20 million RMB. Technical authorization fee. Just to get goods, a requirement to use their baseband chips for development schemes, even if performance was lagging, and no penalties for late deliveries. Huawei directly flipped this table, driving module prices down to under 1,000 renminbi, offering 10 gigabit downlink speeds three times faster than Qualcomm's latest model, and supporting industrial grade low latency so that unmanned forklifts and remote inspection equipment in factories can link in real time. Even more aggressive is Huawei's promise of delivery within 30 days of ordering, which, compared to Qualcomm's, at least six-month waiting period directly led European automakers to exclaim that they finally don't have to look at the Americans' faces. This move not only caused Qualcomm's stock price to plummet 8% in a single day but also made global companies realize the good days of monopoly are over. These two victories for Huawei are by no means accidental. It has not only pierced the US technological blockade but also rewritten the global tech landscape. Next, let's use real cases and data from Europe and the US to uncover the secret of how Huawei gets stronger the more it is sanctioned, and see how it is making the EU rush to build AI super factories, and making US companies actively beg for deregulation. First, looking at the chip battlefield, the large-scale application of the Huawei Ascend 920 has directly pricked the bubble of the US. Computing power monopoly. Previously, Global AI computing power was held by Google, Microsoft, and NVIDIA. The EU, anxious about this, launched the AI Continent Action Plan, spending billions to build super factories equipped with 100,000 advanced chips. However, to date, they haven't even been able to scrape together a cluster of 10,000 GPUs. Europe's largest AI center, built jointly by Deutsche Telekom and NVIDIA, only dares to claim it will 
increased German computing power by 50%, a scale less than one-fiftieth of a single data center in Texas. Even more stinging is that the EU's share of AI server shipments in 2023 was less than 10%, a fraction of Asia's. Yet, as soon as Huawei Ascend landed, domestic AI large models immediately ascended to the international top tier, effectively offering the EU a new choice where they don't have to rely on the US. The American mistake lies in treating computing power as a political weapon, whereas Huawei treats it as a livelihood product. The breakthrough of the Ascend 920 essentially shatters the superstition that US chips equals the only choice. The EU spending billions on computing centers with slow progress precisely illustrates that monopoly kills efficiency. When Huawei provides an alternative with a better price performance ratio, it becomes difficult for the US to continue making money through blockades. This also confirms Bill Gates' warning technological blockades will only force China to accelerate breakthroughs ultimately backfiring on the interests of U.S. companies. The revolt of U.S. companies is the biggest slap in the face in this tech game, with NVIDIA bearing the brunt. It must be noted that in the updated 2024 U.S. export control list, the H200 was explicitly listed as a highest-level embargoed item, with regulations stating that transferring related technology to Huawei and affiliated companies can result in fines up to $2 billion. However, as soon as the Huawei Ascend 920 announced large-scale application, Nvidia's stock price went on a roller coaster ride, plunging 12% in three days and evaporating over $60 billion in market value. Desperate, CEO Jensen Huang canceled his Asian summit appearance and flew overnight with his executive team to Washington, barging into the Department of Commerce conference room to slam the table. If you continue the embargo, we will completely lose the Chinese market. The report he threw at officials clearly stated, NVIDIA's revenue in China reached $28 billion in 2024, accounting for 18% of total global revenue, with Chinese customers contributing nearly 30% of orders in the AI chip business. Even more painful is that the Ascend 920's computing power has reached 95% of the H200, perfectly adapting to the training of ChatGPT-level large models while the price is a full 40% lower. The head of Microsoft China privately revealed at a closed-door industry meeting that their tests using 100 Ascend chips showed higher training efficiency than 80 hours 200 seconds, with costs slashed in half, and they have already submitted an intent to purchase 1,000 units. Even Google Cloud quietly contacted Huawei, looking to integrate Ascend into its Asia-Pacific server clusters. Now the U.S. government is thoroughly panicked. On one side, giants like NVIDIA and Qualcomm are pressuring them daily. On the other, the Chinese market is about to be handed over to local players. Ultimately, they had to loosen their bite, allowing the export of H200 to China, but with an additional 25%. Special license fee. This isn't regulation. It's a helpless compromise born of the fear of losing orders while trying to save face. After all, if pushed too hard, these companies might just move their production lines to China. Capital always chases profit. U.S. political manipulation ultimately cannot defeat market laws. Huawei has used technical strength to turn the embargo card into a multiple-choice question, trapping U.S. companies in a dilemma of either lose the market or beg for deregulation. The 25% levy looks more like a U.S fig leaf, seemingly making money, but in reality admitting Huawei's competitiveness. This also tells us, core technology is not for choking others, but for serving the market. Blockades that go against the market will eventually be shattered by technological breakthroughs. Looking again at the disruptive nature of the 5G module, it directly overturned Qualcomm's monopoly banquet. Previously, Qualcomm ruled the high-end 5G module sector pricing units above 3,000 renminbi and forcing manufacturers to pay a 20 million RMB entry fee, with development schemes costing $1,000 each. European automakers were miserable. BMW's Munich factory used Qualcomm modules previously, increasing communication costs by 1,200 euros per vehicle, costing an extra 1 billion euros a year. Huawei's 5G module, however, 
not only reaches 10 gigabit speeds supporting real-time linkage of unmanned factory equipment but costs less than 1,000 renminbi. The Volkswagen Group immediately ordered 100,000 units, bluntly stating, We can save 800 million euros in costs a year. Huawei's brilliance lies in transforming U.S. monopoly profiteering into reasonable profit. Qualcomm has harvested the globe for years through technological monopoly, and European companies dared not speak out until Huawei appeared and offered hope. This isn't a simple price war, but technological inclusion. When high-end technology is no longer controlled by a few nations, global enterprises can compete fairly. The previous U.S. monopoly essentially hindered global technological progress, while Huawei's breakthrough is precisely practicing the original intention of supporting global technological development. The reaction of the European market further highlights the global significance of Huawei's breakthrough. The EU chips act through 43 billion euros to support local companies, and Francis C. Pearl spent 130 million euros developing a sovereign chip. Yet it won't hit the market until 2027, and it uses an old 2020 architecture. In contrast, Huawei is not only technologically leading but can also supply on a large scale immediately. At Mercedes-Benz Stuttgart factory, after switching to Huawei 5G modules, production line response speed improved by 50%, and the defect rate dropped by 30%. The factory manager bluntly stated in an interview, we can't wait for European chips. Huawei is the only reliable choice. This attitude of voting with their feet is more persuasive than any slogan. Europe's chip anxiety is essentially a fear of technological monopoly. When the US choked Huawei, Europe suddenly realized it was also naked. Without autonomous chips, it could only choose sides between the US and China. Huawei's breakthrough gave Europe a third way accessing advanced technology without relying on the U.S. This is the ideal state of global technological development, companies competing on technical strength, not countries blocking via political power. Huawei has proven with action that technology should be a bridge connecting the world, not a weapon of confrontation. Another key reason for the failure of U.S. controls is that Huawei holds the resource lifeline. Chip production relies on rare metals like gallium and germanium and China controls over 90% of global capacity. Previously, just as the U.S. announced a ban on Ascend, China signaled rare earth export controls. U.S. auto giant Ford immediately jumped out to object because the gallium raw materials for its EV chips rely entirely on Chinese supply. Even better, Huawei joined forces with Huada Empyrean, Empyrean Software, to create domestic EDA software, breaking the U.S. monopoly on chip design tools, forcing the U.S. to lift EDA export restrictions in July for fear of completely losing the Chinese market.